Now, hey, what is up, everyone? We have a neat little mailbox key that just came in to be replaced. Of course, opened and replaced, and everybody's like, wow, look at that. It's a wafer slider. High security, yes. Definitely high security for the U.S. market. So let us take a look at it. All right, y'all. So uh, this is the new lock he had purchased. Uh, I think this is somebody a uh, business doing this for somebody. But as you can see, this is a big pedestal mount type box that just sits. It's like just a box, but it is a super good box and a super good lock. And uh, I'll show you the paperwork that came with it. It is from uh, Mail Boss Locking Security cabinets 12 disc wafer lock installation for mailbox like 12 disc wafer that's a little bit not correct and we are going to take a look at why because um now i will say again this is the lock that is new this is the one oh my god <laughs> oh that's just yeah, so uh, there's some anti-drill protection in there too, y'all. And actually, I think I discovered why I was not getting any like feedback when I was trying to pick it or anything like that. And if we look in there real close, I'm going to take a picture very, very close. When I first was handed it, look at that. We have the little slider center groove doodads. Wait, does it go that way? Yeah, it goes that way. There we go. And I mean, you can see the wafers moving. And luckily I had the lock in hand uh, to check out like how it was built and all that. So, um, yes, but, so what I was getting was, uh, number one, this is a really, really wide really wide keyway and i was not getting anything when i was trying to turn it it felt really tight and uh, nothing was binding for me if we take a uh take another pick here and uh kind of go down i'll show you what i was talking about very quickly like nothing is really Nothing is really working. There's no good tension on it. And I found out why after I put this one in because, because it is grabbing the tailpiece. When you turn it, listen. You hear that crunch, 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 crunch. Okay. And you can actually watch it right in here. Move a bit. That is because this tailpiece, or this, yeah, I guess it would be the cam, I guess would be the thing on the back, right? And now you can see I've already ground it down here. Number one, it hit right there. This is the, the only way you can install this is I have it this way. You can't go from this direction, but I had to grind down the cam because it was not clearing right here. And... I still need to grind it down just a bit because it is hitting underneath. It's hooking into a hook right here. You can see the hook. However, there's not a lot of clearance behind it for this big whomping thing right here. So I was having a lot of trouble picking it if I had it open like so. Now, of course, right when I saw it, I was just, I looked at him like, really? Really, really, really. But if we do it with it open and not binding, I'm actually getting a lot better feedback. And that is just because uh, it was it was tight right there. It was hold, holding it. It was not letting me turn correctly. And I matched up the old, after I got it open, I matched up the old cam. It's exactly the same, so... Um, and when I finally was able to get down to where I was able to get it to turn, somewhat messily, I might add, 
I uh, discovered that it was it was doing that same thing so um, but once we get it apart so I mean, you know, I'm not I'm not doing this to show you how to pick these or, or if I'm able to pick them but I will make one notation because it does have the dual slider keys on it. But I do want to point out one thing about it. So if we take this off, zoom out just a bit. Take the screw, standard cam lock basically, just a fancy one. Just a fancy one with a couple of extra parts. Uh, and the big whomping cam, Ooh, big whomping cam, heavy duty. Uh, the, these, you know, back in the day, these were a lot thinner and smaller. Due to recent post office changing, they had to uh, make all the current cams pretty big. So let's look at the core on this bad boy. Bad boy. I'll get a key and stick in there. Now the key will only go in one way, so there's a little notch. Let me make sure there is a code on this key, so I didn't want to. I think it'll only go in one way. Let's try the other way. Oh, no, it'll go in both ways. Um, so there we go. Now pull this out and let's look at this. Now, yeah, see something interesting right there, huh? Why aren't, is, it, is it collapsed spring? I will make a note. There is a dust cover in here as well, spring loaded. Uh, but as soon as I used the key like twice, it it jammed in. And when the and when the uh, old one came in, it was also jammed in as well. But uh, look, we have these. And through the course of opening it, I discovered these aren't wafers; those are drill drill wafers. I think because they show snap some bits on me. Because once you clear out this area right here, there is like a sharp angle on the inside of them that is different than the other ones. So it's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And uh, now you're going to ask about the slider part of it. So yeah, okay, so that uh, bit went straight through that, but behind there is where it was catching. So if we go in and we start lifting up what we think are the sliders, we can tell it is lifting. Oh, let's go this way. Let me see it better. Wait, which side are we on? Ah, we're on the right side. Alright, so. Let's go all the way to the back and then pull down the ones with the sliders. We can see it's basically one, three, five, seven, and nine that have the center. And then if we try to pull the other ones down, we can see they won't go down all the way. Now I was using a, uh, a hook, an HPC hook, not this Peterson. Um, but one thing I did notice when I was messing with this is I'm reaching to the back of the core, right? Look at that. I can't get to that last wafer. I can, I can manipulate this one pretty well. Uh, the, and the other ones are fairly easy, but they're, they're, they're really hard to get to, honestly. Like you see, I'm, I'm, instead of hitting the center ones, I'm going just going against the bottom. So there's, there's one. Or uh, four, I guess I should say. Um, and it just keeps, it's, it's not, there's that, and I can't get it to push down. So I don't know really what's going on in there. I'm going to the back and literally I just cannot get that very last wafer to move down. I can get number, what is that, nine, eight. There we go, eight. Um, but they're so close to each other. This one is definitely, and I can't, I can't even get that one to move because there's a center divider that's blocking it. So uh, maybe a sharp right angle, maybe a, like a half diamond or something. I don't know. So yeah, that is why it ended up having to die, guys. Unfortunately, I would have liked to have kept this lock and or kept the old lock and played with it, but 
you know, people want the stuff done, so that's what you gotta do. It was not fun to drill through. If you come up on one of these in the field, y'all, this is not one that you wanna mess with or take lightly, cause it was not, not fun at all to get into. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you that because it is a very unique lock for the North American market. And uh, I'm going to put all this back together and go grind this down just a bit more so that it doesn't bind so bad. Even though it makes it kind of harder to pick. <laughs> oh, come on. Wait, you go this way. Okay. It's key retaining. You gotta, you gotta, it's gotta be in the locked position. Anyway. That's it. That's it. Woo! Uh, yeah. If you have any questions or comments, I have absolutely no idea about anything about this lock besides it's a neat little key. Definitely hard to get into for a U.S. lock, mailbox lock.